Carl and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbang Life, GBHBL.com for sure. And it is, of course, track by track time as we're going for something heavy, something extreme. It is The Violent Sleep of Reason, the eighth studio album by the Swedish extreme metal band Mashuga, released on the 7th of October 2016 by Nuclear Blast. Uh, just a fact I saw about it, the album was recorded live in the studio with all the members. Thought it was a bit different to how people make albums these days. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, as always, Meshuggah. They have not appeared in the Track by Track series yet, so we'll th- talk about uh, experience with them. You got much experience with them? I never really became a fan of Meshuggah. I know mm-hmm. a, a little bit about them, but whatever, sometimes it happens in it for whatever reason. I don't know if it's just one that passed me by, but I've been around long enough now. I doubt that. So I imagine I have probably checked my sugar out at some point and just thought, eh, not really for me for whatever reason. So, so that's it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of the same. I've heard enough of sugar. I've seen them. I'm, I, I know I've seen them live once and it was around 2008, 2009 at the Astoria two before back in the day. Um, but I have a, so my problem with sugar is this is I like my sugar and then I get sick of my sugar that there's only so much I can take which when you do a full album sure became a problem for me uh mm-hmm. you know um they're at bloodstock this year of course they're a headliner I will be more than up for checking them out can't say I'm gonna be able to do an hour and a half of it but we'll see yeah, that's a lot of the reason why I wanted to check the album out. Is like, look, you know, the headline in Bloodstock. Go back, listen to something. The Violent Sleeper Reason, as far as I'm aware, being one of their bigger, sort of titled albums. Hopefully, listen to this, become madly in love with it. That by <laughs> the time Bloodstock comes, I know every song they've ever released and every word, and really enjoy the headline slot. That may or may not have been the case. <laughs> we will see. Interesting. You know, I will say that this isn't my first lesson to this album. There are songs I'm pretty familiar with and stuff I do thoroughly enjoy. So we'll kick this off by starting with the first one. It's Clockworks. And this was an actually one that kind of took me back. And it was kind of, oh, yeah, I know this. And it's been a while since I've heard this. Uh, the meaty, heavy, complex sound of this massive owner puts me right back in the sugar mind frame. It is a bit of a banger. A nice start. A track layered with intensity and danger. Brutally heavy, but delightfully complex. I could listen to this track quite a bit, I think, and and still find things to enjoy in it. Yeah, I I mean, obviously for me, I I don't feel like when I listened to this album that I recognised anything while at the same time feeling like I recognized everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I I kind of, I mean, this first song, listening to it for the first time, I was like, all right, I know who Ms. Sugar are. I know what to expect to a degree. And I was like, okay, firstly, song starts really cool. Nice and crunchy, big, heavy drums, big, heavy riffs, heavy vocals, very aggressive, plenty of sort of depth to the, to the tones. Mm-hmm. I like little moments in it guitar solos and stuff like that but i also as i always do get a little bit frustrated with that whole oh look we play out of time sometimes as well (laughs) you know so there are moments in some of this stuff where i find that grating there are moments where i find it refreshing Mm. um but in clockworks i didn't particularly love it over the course of the song i started to feel like actually as much as i enjoy the heaviness the riffs the drums in particular, which I think are very strong across the whole album. Yeah. Um, it's also quite repetitive. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I kind of ended the song with, okay, it's a decent opener. It's got a lot of stuff I like. Not necessarily a standout track to me that I'm going to be like, oh man, I, I need to hope they play Clockworks live. Okay. So yeah, so a lukewarm start for me. Sugar has one of those rabid hardcore fan bases. So back in your box, people. Yeah, it's just our opinion. Born in Dissonance. A track with more tempo shifts than you can keep up with. The underlying chunky guitar and drum combo is what keeps me interested here, though. I think the vocals, as ever mentioned, as they are quite scathing, 
I think I can sum this track up by just saying it's a mean one. It's it's a mean one, Mister Mashuga. Yeah, I mean, if 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 the rabid fan base is going to be pissed off with what I said about Clockwork, man, like strap in. <laughs> <laughs> Which you get to the end of this track by track. Um, okay. I, 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 so again, I quite like the way this song starts off, right? I felt like it's got quite an industrial edge to the tone, the riffs. I like the beat. I like the rhythms to it. I like how heavy it is. It's very, very bassy, very, very aggressive. Um, but it's also, to me, extremely one tone. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying that that's that's their style. That's the, what the band is, right? But when I say that, I'm talking about like actually even just from Clockworks into this. So I'm I'm like okay, not that doesn't mean I hate it, but the vocals are heavy, extreme, but monotone all the mm. way. There aren't pass. I'm not saying I need it, but there aren't passages of clean singing. There aren't passages of higher tones, lower tones. There aren't layered vocals. There aren't like oh look, there's a second vocalist in the background it is the uh, one train all the way through at the same level and that for me is fine i like it it's heavy and all that sort of stuff and there's also some cool things in this i really really like the lead guitars in this one even though they are some to that time that i like yep. in here i found it was quite refreshing and i thought the guitars were at, the higher pitch was like a really nice contrast to this sort of steady kind of lower bassy tone that's used the rest of the album or rest of the song even the little uh, spoiler there <laughs> so yeah, it's it's like a, a song of moments for me. You know, I really do think on the two songs so far, I was like, and actually, it's happened quite a lot over the album. Like, I think they're very good at intros. <laughs> I think they're very good at capturing my attention. They're not always so good at holding it. It's kind of where I settled. Oh man, you said so much. That's only two tracks in. You've already gone into so much bloody detail. <laughs> yeah, so I'm scared. I'm going to get attacked by my sugar fans at Bloodstock. <laughs> Yes, well, you know, it could be one of those headliners uh, where the crowd is a little bit smaller than normal, but uh, we shall see. Monstrous City. The guitars are like buzzsaws in the brain here. This is a track that just keeps slicing away until you're left feeling a little bit of a dribbling wreck. It's nasty. Yeah, good start again. Nice bassy riff. It's got a lot of elements I like a lot, but it really does all sound very samey. I think it may be to do with the strong, and I do enjoy them. It's the weird thing on it, but they are monotone. Their vocals are mm. very singular tone all the way through this song. The two songs that came before it, you know, if you isolated the vocals on this and played it, I couldn't pick what song it came from. Could have been any single song on this album because there is nothing stand out about them in that. But I like them. I, that's the thing. I like the power. They are powerful. They are aggressive and they have like real depth. But if you're going to just do that all the way through every single song, while it's still good to listen to, it's not exciting to listen to. Mm. And that's a lot of the time where I came out of this. Like, I don't hate this song. I certainly don't. I don't hate any of the songs that came so far. But I also don't find it particularly exciting. Yeah. You know, so um, the drums, I do. I find the drums. Actually, I find the drums, I think, across the board to be fucking brilliant. Yeah. I really enjoy the drums. There's, like, real power to them. Loads of, like, clever little patterns. And, you know, it's really, really cool to listen to. The riffs, uh, they're good riffs. They're good, strong riffs. The leads are all like good and high and contrasting and everything like that. Everything is really, really good, all coming together to make a relatively average track. For me. Soz. Nope, it's fair. It's fair. All right, let me get by the ton. Uh, this is a one of my favorite. The riffs in this one are savage. This is one of the bangers of the album, in my opinion. It punishes you over and over again in the best way possible. It's nasty, but I find it's got a bit of groove in places. It's just one of those really heavy gold tracks. Uh, this is one that I just found I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the intro again. Well, um, good to say. I did actually write, I could happily listen to a whole album of my sugar intros. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I pointed out the drums because I just I kind of do that quite a lot. Um, I really like the riffs as well. They're very kind of bendy and like mm. sliding kind of riffs, uh, even during the verses. Um, and when the verse comes to an end, there's a really kind of weird kind of riffing thing going on. Very, very messed up, which is quite chaotic and uh, and uh, to listen to. But I really liked it. Instrumental section of this is really, really good. So there's a lot of cool things that I like. But it does still, for me, suffer from some of the things that I don't like on the songs before. So while I actually quite enjoy this song, the only thing I would say is that like it could possibly do with maybe being a minute or so shorter for me mm. because it's quite long. I think it's like six plus minutes for mm. a song that has so little variety on it. In my the opinion. title track 
<laughs> well, it's, it's the title a track, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, this should be no secret. It's not like yeah. I think the track by tracks are now our longest running oh. series on the YouTube channel. In case anyone who probably who doesn't know me, I really couldn't give a fuck if I'm offending anyone. Yeah, so. <laughs> there is that anyway. Yes, the title track, uh, Violet Stupid Reason. Manic, heart racing, quite listenable. It's very complex, but I think this has got a glorious feel to it. This is from this is there's a cutoff point here. So this was the last track that I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm really enjoying this. I'm into this. I'm into this. Give you a spoiler for the rest of the album. Um, you know, I am noticing. Obviously, as you pointed out, the word samey. And I know that might always be sacrilege to a Meshuggah fan because it's not, it's not. Do you listen to those time signatures? Do you listen to this and so on? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's not really seeping in as much. You know, I'm not a guitar nerd. Not saying you're a nerd if you like that stuff. What I mean is like, I'm not studying the aspects. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm taking it on board and letting it wash over me. And I do like Violent Sleep of Reason. I think it's a good song. Yeah, I think the intro is mental. Um, and again, I did point out here they're good at capturing your attention. Sometimes for me, I'm struggling to hold it. Uh, it's heavy mm. number, wicked drums and punchy riffs, and really interesting guitar work too. The vocals, again, continue to have plenty of power and be very aggressive, which I like a lot, but but also be quite robotic in terms of delivery. Um, I didn't, there was, there was one thing with this song that I couldn't quite work out if they were doing it on purpose or not. Right. I imagine because they're intelligent musicians, they were. And if they were, I thought it was brilliant. Uh, but if they weren't, then it was just another problem for me. And that is that there was a, I felt like the lead guitar had a really, really weird sound in it, like a really sort of different, dissonant kind of sound mm. that made me actually quite uncomfortable listening to it. And then I, but that, then I couldn't, I was trying to work out like a song called Violent Sleep for Reason, you know, like has it been written in this way to kind of create that sort of discomfort? And if it was the aim, they absolutely smashed it. Oh, and wow. like, well, well done. That was really, really clever. If it wasn't, then it may be just, I'll never know. So I'm just going to say it was and they smashed it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I quite like this song. Um, probably my favorite so far, I think. Okay. Well, you may get your chance, not saying we'd get to an interview with them at Bloodstock or anything like that, but you never know, you might end up rubbing shoulders briefly with them. Just tap them on the shoulder and say, that riff, that guitar tone, was that on purpose? If they say no, I'm just going to be like, ah, that means you are shit then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. yeah. Ivory Tower. Okay, so this is where I found my attention <clears throat> waning, as I really don't think this track has anything going on. It is heavy. It's got some interesting guitar tones that make it feel a little more frantic. But man, that's about it. I, 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 This was one of those, you know, where you have to go back and listen to it two or three times to even really come up with notes. And this was this the case with me. Yeah, I actually, for the first and time on the album, really, mm. while I still have criticisms, I kind of have a nice little run here now. Okay. Um. So... I did feel by this point, and actually, it's interesting how this was the point for you where you felt like, you know, things were maybe not going downhill or such, but stagnating a little bit. Yes. You know, and I did write down that this, I really feel at this point that this album could do with a little bit of a change of direction here and there to switch things up a little bit. Um, there's plenty of variety. And actually, this kind of addresses what we were saying a minute ago. There's loads of variety in the drums, the riffs, the way that the instruments are being played. But the problem is tone everything sounds the same on every song they use it they use the same vocal tone the same tone on the guitars everything is just the same um and it's causing for me extreme like song bleed like at mm. this point now i could not tell you if you played any part from any one of these songs that had come before with it, i wouldn't be able to place it at all yep um so i was sort of feeling that with this point and i, I but my main point of the intro what i'm saying here really was that I needed something different. However, I do feel like I got it later on in the song when I wasn't expecting it. And at the right. point where my mind was almost completely checked out, there was suddenly a nice little solo with a kind of crunchy rhythm behind it mm -hmm. that was different to a lot of what I'd heard before that I felt sounded different. And, ju and just, just in that moment, it then actually ends with a sudden stop and then starts again, which I also hadn't heard across the album so far. And it had two moments in a song that suddenly made me refocus my attention and refresh me. 
to the point where I was like, that was cool. Thank you. So yeah, I like that. I, I, I like Ivory Tower. Oh, fair enough. No, it's cool that you got that at least. Um, Stifled. Look, this is one of the heaviest sounding tracks of all, I think, and continues the Meshuggah run of uh, beating around the head with the riffs, drums and vocal combo. It is another beast on an album of beasts, which in it can be taken two ways. And that's how I've seen it. Like, that sounds like praise. And it is praise. It's a beastly track on an uh, album filled with beastly tracks. But there's my criticism of this one. It 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 it's it, what you just said about picking out. Uh, this yeah. is this is this problem I have now. Yeah. Whereas this is my second in a row that I like. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, I've I, so I quite you know all the things that we all like are all still there, right? I'm not. You know, I can say the same thing on every bloody song. Yeah, the drums are really really good. Very powerful vocals, cool riffs, some nice kind of grooving rhythm at points in this one. Um. I did again in this one start finding myself losing focus part way through mm. because I do think like probably like past the halfway stage, aside from it being all the stuff they already do again and still being good, nothing stands out. But mm. again, they just added a couple of things near the end of it, which switched it up for me and that made it stand out by the end of it. Right. So mm. there's a little bit of additional kind of messing about with the guitar, which is like really, really weird and really, really quirky, but definitely refocused me, you know? And then also it kind of goes into that dreamy sort of atmospheric kind mm. of section, which I don't think I would have like, weirdly, I don't think on, on an album that used stuff like that all the time that I would have it as a stand up moment, but it stands out so much here because they don't really do that. Uh, or sorry, they haven't done it on the album so far. I don't know what they do on other albums. So yeah, fair. Yeah. So suddenly going into that was like, oh, okay. So I started, I guess, becoming a more of a fan of these songs because they were like, I don't know, tricking me a little bit. <laughs> like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was like, oh, I didn't expect to. Other than there's nothing on this fucking album so far that suggests to me there was going to be suddenly be some sort of like electronic sounding atmospherics. Yeah. You know? Um, and and also obviously we'll go into the next one next, but that then that atmospheric becomes the intro to the next track, it which does. I'd also not seen across anything on this album so far to suggest the idea that they would go from one song into the next, you know, like seamlessly like that. So, so yeah. So again, I ended up enjoying this more for the moments that were standing out as different to the rest of the album. So. And you're right, it does flow into Nostrum. We can kind of just roll straight into that one. As Yes, that is a notable thing that even I'm taking away from it. Uh, but this ultimately descends or, you know, elates into chaotic and crushing progressive heaviness. So to me, it delivers nothing but intensity from beginning to end. It's very Meshuggah. It's very, it's not, I'm not enjoying it. Like, I'm not angry. I'm not sitting there going, oh, this, whatever, and so on. And I'm not, like, madly, maddingly bored either. It's just a bit like I'm struggling to write about it because I'm like, yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, the drums are great. Yeah, the rest of this, this, that, yeah. whatever. And it's like, well, what can I say beyond that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the things I was struggling a lot with. This is like, I could, I, I could, I, tell, I, I just honestly true. I didn't do this, but I thought in my head, but when I finished this album, I was going to delete everything that I wrote and I was just going to write, I'm going to give you one paragraph which covers all songs. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, yeah, well, that's going to make a shit video, isn't it? Yeah, um, that's not quite it's not quite fair by the rules. <laughs> no. So Nostrum for me is the third track in a row that I do actually very much enjoy. And I think part Ooh. of that is because of the fact that it leads in from Stifled, which I guess gives me that slight difference that I'm looking for, you know. Mm-hmm. Um I just thought that that leading into that adds something special. And then as the kind of crunchy drums and riffs join into that sound it's slightly different whereas most of the other songs have just started straight off with that drums and riffs this now had a kind of layer of atmospherics fading out and then they came and i was like ah different like it mm-hmm. it's got a lot of cool things going on um it's got some a, a lot of the same stuff you know but i guess i'm i'm looking at it with a different viewpoint now you know because it's engaged me with this slight difference so i'm almost appreciating some of the other elements maybe more than i was when it was nothing but those other elements you know, so uh, lots of pace, lots of ferocity. The drums stand out. I like the solo and the lead guitar moments that crop up. I do think during the verses in particular, it could be a verse from any of the other songs, but there's enough around it that I'm like more engaged than I have been. 
Oh, it's really, it's it. I don't know if you've ever had an album that's done this, where you know I've enjoyed the first half more than the second half, and you've enjoyed the second half more than the first. Yeah. Uh, let's see if that continues then to the penultimate track, Our Rage Won't Die, which is an apt title as Meshuggah are still spitting and snarling in ways that others just can't reach. They are on another level when it comes to progressive and technicalities. There's no doubt in that. It's a thing they're famous for, and I don't dispute that in the slightest. It sounds cheap, but I'm going to keep this really simple, which is the drum and riff combination. We said it a lot throughout it, but here it's immense. It's as immense as it is anywhere else. Um, yeah, it's just another, it's a solid track. Yep. And, and, and when I got to this track, I was quite interested in how this was going to go, right? Because I was wondering that, you know, because I had like a difficult intro sort of part of the album, that maybe something was happening and it wasn't actually that the songs had suddenly got better but it was mm. like clicking with me so mm. i was quite interested to see if it continued on now and it, actually i remember thinking to myself if i like the next two tracks i'm going to go back and listen to the first ones again and see if it's just taking time to settle oh wow um, fascinating yeah didn't happen though oh. <laughs> um, i didn't dislike this song actually I, I i still think it's one of the stronger songs on the album for me uh, cool intro, cool drums, cool riffs. I actually think the vocals in this, even though they continue the same tone and the same style, actually work better here. And I don't know why. I could only sort of suggest that maybe it was just that they're combining better with the music. I think it also may be because this song was shorter and more to the point. It's mm. uh, one, I think it's the shortest song on the album, uh, or at least it's not far off that. You know, so maybe less time for, for messing around. And I just felt like it kind of worked well. Uh, some nice lead guitar work in the bridge. Um you know, it, it falls back into overly familiar patterns, though. So while, again, yeah. there's lots of good stuff here, good good vocals, good riffs, good drums, um, it is very, very familiar again. And I don't think that anything happens in this song, unlike the previous three, that will make me remember this one. Right. I think that's you a know. fair point. I'll be interested to see what you think about the finale, Into Decay, uh, because I was ready to check out. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I've heard enough. Just hit me with the big finale. You know, it's going to be this, you know, manic, heavy, fast, insane and stuff like that. And that's not quite what we get here. Um, and it's what I ended up enjoying more than anything else, maybe. It's, it's a bit slow moving. Obviously, it's an endingly heavy with gurney nastiness and beating like no weather. And it's a very heavy closer. But the pacing, the tempos, this is what really kind of kept brought me back in. It's funny, right at the end, I'm like, OK, cool. Like mm. waking up out of a stew pot. Oh, oh, okay, right, let's do this. Oh, it's over. Okay. So I ended up really liking this as a finale. Yeah, I quite enjoyed the fact that it was slowed down. Yeah. Um, Different, you know, as you would say. Yeah. I mean, it's quite a long song, and I was kind of hoping for something big and memorable and that. And in that, it was something different in it, you know. But I guess I was really kind of really looking for something now, you know, something to stand out in here and say, this is why these guys are headlining blood. So this is why these guys are so highly regarded. You know, just something that I could really sync with. Um, and I don't really feel that I got it. Okay. I, I felt like, you know, I liked the fact that it was slowed down. That was enjoyable. Um, the same lines we've used all the time. There's some cool riffs and drums. Um, but I just felt that while slower, we just ended up back at the same thing again. You know? Um, so other than that, I was one of the things I, I was doing, I was like, you know, we often do this with the last track and you kind of mm -hmm. go, oh, like, what order would you put tracks on in this? And the weird thing about this album is it, is it doesn't matter. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. It could be any order whatsoever because while they're all strong songs and they're clearly an extremely talented band and loads of heaviness and everything like that, there's no, like, obvious opener, obvious closer. There's no obvious filler either, which is a good thing. It's yeah. just a, a collection. Of, it feels like a collection of, you know, sugar tracks like rather than mm. like a, a story or an album and here's the end and everything and i'm not saying it had to be a story i know not everyone's doing that so i enjoyed the moments in this as in the slow down thing i thought all right that's different that's a bit cool you know that's again something that we haven't seen but there are only moments that's the thing and a, a small fleet in moments in long songs don't become like the overriding thought for me for that song unfortunately you know so when i get to the end of that song what i'm thinking is is like 
am I going to go back and what am I going back on this album and listening to? And the reality of it is, is I couldn't even turn around to you now, other than the fact that I've got notes in front of me and go, Oh, what about the moment in this song? Yeah. I've got, I got nothing. I got nothing. So he said to me, tell me a bit about my sugar. I could say, well, they're fucking heavy. Very, very, <laughs> you know, that's, and that's really cool. And they, they make some like cool music. I'll give me a song. I wouldn't even know where to start. I'd just pick any one. They all sound the same, bro. <laughs> if you like that one, you're going to like all their work. If you don't like it, you're probably not. You know, oh, so, that'll be that'll be the debatable thing amongst fan bases. I think more than anything else. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm on the same camp as you, right? I'm not going into this like listening to this with any kind of mathematical guitar work knowledge or anything like that. I can hear that it's talented. I can hear that it's complex. I can hear that they're very, very good at what they do. But what I'm just going on is like how I feel when I listen to the songs. You know, that's all it is, and I think it's very, very good. But across the whole album of it with so little switch ups and transitions and variety or anything like that, you know, it's, it's just difficult to pick it apart, you know, come nearly every album I've ever listened to in my life. If it's an album I like, I will come out with, well, that's my favorite song on it. The Mm -hmm. hardest part about this track by track was really choosing the three songs, the top three, really, really difficult. It worries me, and I don't mean that, I'm not going to segue this into like Bloodstock talk, but it worries me after doing this about Bloodstock because obviously in a studio you get the fuck with it, you get to make it as perfect as humanly possible, you get to mess yeah. around with it in a live environment. I'm that's kind of what I'm expecting. I agree. Hopefully, I'm wrong, but I'm expecting potentially mush. I mean, I'm hoping. I was thinking about this. I'm hoping that live, I actually like would like this better. Maybe I'm thinking that there might be slight differences and and coming away from the trying to recreate that perfect tone and all that sort of yes. stuff and you know and obviously a few beers inside can help as well a little bit can't it so of course yeah okay right well let's narrow this down now we got to choose three uh, I'll go first I'll go first I have just gone for the three that I've probably been the most positive about Clockworks by the Ton and Into Decay yeah. Uh, and I'm going to go for the three that I've been most positive about. The three <laughs> songs that I felt did something different on them all the way. And weirdly enough, all came in a row. Nostrum, yeah. Stifled and Ivory Tower. It is Meshuggah's The Violet Sleep of Reason. We gave it a go there as our opinions. If you want to know the difference between someone who did their notes today and what other person who did their notes a month ago, I think you can tell compared to the amount of detail <laughs> that Brendan threw out compared to me. But what are you going to do? Um, that is... The Violet Sleep Reason by Michelle, you've got any thoughts in your note today, let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our Big Cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?